Whenever we collect quantitative data about our users, for example through surveys, quantitative usability testing, or analytics, we need to watch out for things that can ruin our quantitative studies. Confounding variables. A confounding variable is a variable other than the independent variable that may affect the dependent variable. Okay, let me try to explain this without sounding like a statistics professor. We can start by thinking about how we use the numerical data that we collect with our quantitative studies. In order to make sense of one number, we need to compare it against another number. For example, we might use an analytics platform to track our conversion rate on an e-commerce website. Then we redesign the website and we can look at the conversion rate before and after the design change. In this example, the independent variable would be the design change and the dependent variable would be the conversion rate. In other words, we are changing the design and then assess how that change impacts the conversion rate. But we have to watch out because we want to make sure that the numbers that we compare are collected under similar circumstances. We are treating these numbers as an experiment. So as much as possible, we want to make sure that our dependent variable, the conversion rate, is only impacted by the independent variable, the design change. We want to ensure that there is nothing else influencing our numbers other than the design. In other words, we don't want any of those confounding variables. Unfortunately, it isn't always possible to avoid confounding variables. And this is particularly true for analytics data, which reflect how people are using our design in the real world. And the real world is full of confounding variables. Returning to our e-commerce example, what if we collected our first set of data in 2019, before the COVID-19 pandemic, and then the second set of data in 2020, during the pandemic? Let's say that we see that our conversion rate increased by 30% from 2019 to 2020. Can we be sure that our design changes were entirely responsible for that improvement? Probably not. The problem here is that our design changes aren't the only thing changing user behavior. The worldwide COVID-19 caused many drastic changes in user behavior, including a surge in e-commerce shopping because people couldn't or didn't want to go into physical stores. In the context of this example, we really don't know how much of that 30% lift in conversion rate was due to our design changes and how much was due to the pandemic. So this is an example of a confounding variable. And while COVID-19 was a very extreme confounding variable, there are other types of confounding variables that may be less obvious. And we will look at some of them in the next video of this two-part series. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of our UX videos, Take a look at these over here and consider subscribing to our channel. On our website, nngroup.com, you can access our free library of over 2,000 articles. You can also register for one of our UX courses that offer live, hands-on UX training.